Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to mask the right way so that you get good results quickly. At the end of this video, you'll be able to create a nice clean mask like this without running into a bunch of problems later. My name's Casey. I teach content creators how to make amazing things in Fusion. I also have a free video course available. It's in the description below. Let's learn how to mask. We're gonna start real basic. All I have is my media in and my media out. The media in is just a still, a picture of this Game Boy Color. Y'all know what that's about. This is the real deal. And let's say we want to cut this out. Probably the easiest way to do that is just to use a polygon mask and grab this polygon mask and drag it down here near our media in one and take the output of our polygon mask and put this into the blue input of the media in. And what that's going to do is tell the media in to only draw this picture inside of the mask. But we don't have any mask yet, so we have nothing. So what I like to do is select this mask and then go over here to the inspector where we have this little off on switch and just turn the switch off. So we have the mask still connected. That means that it's being sized right and all that junk because any mask will automatically stretch to the image size of whatever it's attached to. So you wanna make sure that it's attached before you start drawing, but we have this off so that we can actually see what we're doing. Now let's give us a little bit of room here. I have my mask selected, but it's turned off and I'm gonna zoom in. And a lot of people when they start masking or when they haven't worked with uh, these kind of Bezier curves that much is they start doing something like this. They'll pick a point and they'll start and they'll just like click a bunch like this and they'll go around and they'll make lots of little points because they think that that is going to make a better mask. They want to go all the way around this curve and that that's going to be the best. And I'll just kind of roughly finish this so we can talk about it. And then I'll close this path by mousing over this first little point. And when I get that circle, I know I'll close the path. Now I can turn on the polygon and we have our mask happening, but there's all these little points. And from far away, if we deselect this mask, it's not terrible, but you know, it's not great either. And especially here where the buttons are, it's still not amazing. And so what people will do is they'll select that mask and they'll go in and they'll just start to kind of refine it like this. They'll go in and kind of change things. And it takes for freaking ever to go through and make that be nice. And so I've seen people spend so long just making this mask. And at the end, the mask has 5,000 points because they've gone all the way around these curves and everything, just trying to make this as good as possible. This is not the way to do it. Don't do it this way. The big problem is that this is hard to adjust. If we want to change this curve here, we have to select all of these points and we can kind of move them around a little bit, but then we have to kind of grab a bunch of them and it's just kind of a pain. It's just like in life, you know, if it might be really awesome to have 15 Lamborghinis, but you have to take care of every single one of them. And that's a ton of work. That's why I don't have 15 Lamborghinis. And so what's a better way? I'm just gonna select all of these and hit backspace to get rid of our mask. And I'm gonna turn that mask off again. The better way with a mask is to be just really lazy. I like to start at a corner generally. We'll just start like here, okay? And what I'm gonna do this time, instead of making this curve by adding a bunch of these little points here, is I'm gonna make one point kind of at the edge of the curve and I'm gonna click and drag. And that's gonna give me this handle that lets me add a curve to our mask. And I'll just take this straight out like that. And then I'll make another point towards the end of the curve and then I'll pull it out like this. And look what happens. We have quite a decent approximation of this curve. And we can go in and change this and everything. But look, we have the same basic effect here with one, two, three points instead of 5,000, okay? And then if there's a straight line, all I do is I just go to where that straight line stops. So right here and click, boom, like that. So now we've done this whole side of this Game Boy imperfectly, we'll go back and change it. But we've done basically this whole side of the Game Boy with one, two, three, four points. When you have a little nubbin like this, you can just make a point here in the middle and click and drag and guess what? It's happening, boom, like that. That'll make the same basic shape. Again, it's straight here and we'll do one kind of big curve like that, boom, straight, just like this. And that's a pretty good way to draw those curves. Again, each one of these just takes like three points instead of a ton. By the way, to move this around, I'm just pushing down on the scroll wheel, that's the middle button on the mouse, to kind of pan this and I'm just kind of dragging it. So I'm just gonna go down to where this stops being a straight line. So all the way down towards the bottom, 
And again, I'll just click and drag here at the beginning of the curve and kind of click and drag towards the end of the curve. And I'm gonna pull this out to where that line is basically on this edge here. And we have a great big curve here. Again, I can just select in the center and pull that out really heavily like that. Again, it's not perfect, but we can go back and change it, right? Same thing, and I'm just approximating these curves. And if it's straight, I'm just letting it be straight. And if it's curved, I'm just doing an approximate version of that curve with only a couple of points. Very nice way to do it, okay? Come up here, again, we'll pull that out, pull this one out. And now again, this is straight over to our original one. I'll just hit that. We don't even really need this one here. I can select that, hit backspace, and now, we have this cut out, again, imperfectly, but there are not that many points on this mask. And so editing this is really easy. So I'll go in here and just refine this mask a little bit. I'll take this edge and kind of move it over. I can maybe turn off my polygon here. Just let this settle a little better. If I want a really sharp curve here, I can hold control and grab this handle and I can move that handle by itself. And I'll just push this handle in like that. Same thing on this side, I'll just push this handle in. So now we have a better curve here. And I'm just gonna go through and refine my mask using just a few points, making sure that this fits right on the edge there. And if it doesn't, I'm gonna try and grab the handles and adjust the handles so that it fits. I'd rather just adjust the handles that are there then add more points. This, I can probably take this handle out a little more. This has a big handle that's kind of moving that over. So I'll just push this in. That still hugs that side pretty well. This has a great big handle too. I'll push that in just so it's on the edge. Just moving that over so that it hugs the edge perfectly. And there we go. There's our Game Boy schnoop. And we can cut it out like that. And that edge is awesome but now we have this nice curved edge that looks really natural. There's no problems with it. And it's really easy to edit because I mean, down here we have one, two, three, four, five points on this entire like bottom half of the Game Boy. Pretty awesome. This is especially helpful if you're gonna animate the mask or do any rotoscoping. If you wanna learn more about that, let me know and I'll make another video on it. But that's how you draw that mask. So yeah, that's the basics of drawing a mask. I don't feel like anybody makes videos on that kind of thing. Man, it's so important to have these kind of essential techniques. So I hope this was helpful for you. If you want more videos kind of like this, let me know. And we'll go over some of those kind of basic things that nobody explains. Hey, if you're a content creator and you're wanting to jump into Fusion, I have a survival guide for you. It is a free video course. It's available in the description down below. We have a lot more Fusion things coming up. So make sure to subscribe and do all the junk people tell you to do on that. I hope this helps you not suck at masking. Okay?